What's up, you guys? I hope y'all are doing good out there today, man. I ain't got a lot of time for no um, production. I'm getting ready to head out here very shortly. Uh, headed back to Birdstown. Hadn't been on here last week. It was 4th of July. I took the week off. Um, done a little fishing. The weekend before, we played a gig. Um, played out on Dale Hall Lake in Birchville, Kentucky, out of Mike's Landing. That's a badass place. And we're going to be back out there July 27th. If you want to come see me and Ellie Johnson, Mike's Landing in Birchville, Kentucky, on Dale Hall Lake, July 27th, 1 p.m. to 4 p.m., We'd really appreciate that. Um, so we went out there and played the open mic and kind of auditioned for Mike's Landing and got the gig or got us, you know, booked for a gig. One of the requirements was you had to go play the open mic first, and we did. And Mike was digging everything we were doing, the guy that owns the place. And uh, we got booked, man. It was a cool deal. And then... The Saturday before the 4th of July, we played the 4th of July celebration in Birdstown, Tennessee. Um, that was fun. Played for an hour and then jumped right in the truck and headed ass to Cookville and played a full band gig with Ellie's band at Red Silo in Cookville. And, uh, man, that was a fun time. It was a damn good gig. They had their own sound engineers, a brewery, a uh, food truck, and, you know, the whole nine yards. I love playing those little breweries, man. They're a lot of fun. I've, I've played a dozen of them. Um, always a good time. The food trucks are always unique. I, I think that stuff's pretty interesting. They had fresh uh, in-house made root beer. Um, it was supposed to be really good. I didn't have any of it, but um, just a good time. The sound, Having a sound engineer when you're playing a full band gig makes all all the difference in the world. It went so good, man. Um, so inspiring playing with, you know, a good group of guys when, when things really come together, man. We had a damn good time. Uh, but I've been working on my acoustic rig. I've been knee-deep in studying, like, acoustic tone and putting together a little acoustic pedal board and stuff. And um, I'm working, putting batteries and everything right now. I got a... A pedal board but it's all set up for my electric rig right now and uh i'm rolling out today with just my acoustic so i bought i'll show y'all guys what i've been working with i got the lr bags uh venue di this is supposed to help a lot with feedback issues this is a preamp too if you don't if you're playing your acoustic i have the lr bags lyric pickup installed in my um eastman ETND. Um, that's my gig guitar. And I've, I've it, the guitar sounds great and the guitar plays great and I love it. But I've never been completely satisfied with my tone live. It just sounds weak, thin, um, you know, just so many different things. So I've done some research and this is what I come up with. This is supposed to help so much. For acoustic players, these are expensive, guys, but these are supposed to be, I want to put it to the test this weekend at a private gig. That's what we're going to play. This is supposed to help with feedback tremendously. Most importantly, like this notch filter right here. Guys, if you, what I've researched is if you're getting feedback, which the lyric in my guitar gets feedback a lot. When you're getting feedback, if you will slowly dial this notch filter around it will finally at some point catch whichever frequency is feeding back and it will kill it that's a great great thing of course you got your three band eq sweepable mids is a little uncharted territory for me i got to do a little more research on the sweepable mids but what i have really found is that when my guitar tone of electric and acoustic there's two schools. There's people who want to scoop the mids, which basically means boost the lows, boost the highs, drop the mids. But me, I mean, here in the past couple of weeks, I've really been fooling with this, and I like the mids boosted. And it seems there's a certain percentage of people that enjoy that too. To me, that sounds more natural. It sounds fuller almost um, to push those mids a little bit. And that's kind of the way I've got this set 
right here. Um, mids are boosted, lows are, you know, the base is just kind of setting. I've cut the presents a little bit and I got my treble cut just a tad. Now, um, your volume control, see what I wanted this for is instead of just handing a sound engineer a guitar cable and letting him do whatever he wants to do with it, I got this, uh, I have control. They're gonna get whatever I give them. This volume control that's on here has nothing to do with the volume that's running into your board. The DI puts out a line level signal. You adjust your gain, set your gain properly, and this will be fine. The volume knob is strictly for running to a monitor. That way you have control of your monitor volume with this. The volume only controls if you have a monitor hooked up to your aux out. I think that's awesome. Um, it's got a tuner built into it, battery check. It's got a boost switch, which seems to feed back incredibly a lot if you got it cranked up. It's a nine, uh, You can adjust it on the back here up to 9 dB of boost. I think this is going to be really handy when I can get it used, I, when I can get it figured out. I picked this up used from Guitar Center website, shipped it right to me, the case and everything. Pretty excited to, to get it and, uh, and see how much of a difference it makes. So I got that, that's step one on my pedal board. Well, actually the last step, you wanna run everything else out of this into the, the PA system. I also picked up a LR Bags uh, reverb pedal. If I have full control over my mix, I want, a little, I want reverb on my own without using the reverb and built-in effects for your mixer. You can have that with this, control it. So right now, that's what I got on my board, and I've also got, I've had this thing for years, man. I've used this for practicing and writing and creating solos or working out solos or whatever. A TC Electronics Ditto Looper Pedal. They have these with two channels. This is a mini safe space saver. Um, I was just sitting here taking it apart. I thought it had a spot you could put a battery in it. It does not have a spot you could put a battery in. And I've had this cable for a long time. This is a nine volt adapter plug with, you can put a freaking nine volt battery on the end of it. I've had this thinking that this would work for years. That I, if I needed it, I could power a pedal, just attaching a battery to this and plugging it in. I don't know why, but this doesn't work. So that's out. Um, I don't know what I'm gonna do yet. I don't wanna strip my pedal board down and take a power supply and all that shit. I should have bought a one spot for it, but I'm leaving in like 30 minutes. I haven't had the chance. Um, so that's what I'm dealing with right now. I'm just kind of putting batteries. I got to put a battery in this. The DI's got a battery in it already. Um, I may just have to do without the looper pedal. And that'll be okay. I can get, you know. But I want to be able to add the looper eventually because I think with just me and Ellie, she's just singing and it's just me playing guitar. It could add a little dynamics and give me a little more space to play some lead, you know, some picking. And uh, I want to incorporate some harmonica playing in there, too, eventually. So uh, not a lot going on this week. I just want to jump on here and talk about that. Please, you guys, um, I've been dropping some demos of songs I've written. I've got a bag full of original songs I've been carrying around. I'm getting to the point now where like, if I don't do something with them, they're going to get lost or I'm going to die and then they'll just be stuck in my head and uh, nobody will ever hear them. So if you want to check out, they're on YouTube. I have a playlist that I've titled Original Music. It's got four demos that I've put out this week on there. They're just rough cell phone cuts, nothing special, just the songs. It's the ideas, you know, just some tactile place where the fucking songs can live. Um, and that's what we're doing right now. I'm going to be putting out some more, probably not until next week. But if you want to like and follow my TikTok, Instagram, Facebook like page, underscore Alan Wayne, on all those, YouTube, anywhere you want to find me, I'm out there. We would appreciate it. Sharing them, telling your friends, uh, come to a gig, man. Just we're trying to get this stuff out here and just 
have a place for it to live. It's there if y'all want it. If you don't want it, I'm not cramming it down anybody's throat. Um, I think that's it. I'm not. I'm not gonna be on here too long. I just wanted to touch base with y'all and let y'all know what was up. Um, try to be back on and do a regular episode of the podcast here before too long. Maybe next week. Um, I've been doing a lot of studying too on my electric rig, and man, I'm like this close from getting a digital amp pedal and like just not carrying a tube amp anymore it's a sad day i, I want to carry the tube amp i want it there i want to crank that bitch up and stand in front of it and play my guitar and feel the the vibration but traveling with a tube amp gigging with a tube amp the places that we've been is, is becoming less and less practical more just the, the logistics of lugging it and traveling with it there's not a lot of room there's not a good quality place for it to be without getting beaten banged and vibration i got my princeton reverb right now uh, i got a 79 princeton reverb that i love it keeps blowing a fuse every time i turn it on so i'm working with that trying to get it back running got the old hot rod deluxe uh that's a bulletproof tank but i don't know man i kind of been looking at the strime and iridium as last on my pedal board and i could have a guitar and my pedal board and go directly into the pa it's not a tube amp from what i've heard it's damn close so i might end up getting one of those and testing it out and i'll be able to talk to y'all about it if you've used the lr bag stuff if you've got any opinions or um, anything you can offer on acoustic tone if you've used the strymon iridium or any of the other modeling amp pedals let me know what you guys think, man. Like, um, I love the tone. I love all that with the tube amps. But I think the ease of portability and quick setup and, and all that would almost be worth the, uh, the the payoff, you know. So let me know what you guys think, man. Uh, check out my music, my demos and stuff. Spread them around. Follow me on TikTok. Uh, until then, peace, man. Y'all take it easy.